We are happy to move forward and engaging panel discussion to talk about the power of data and API. I would like to invite the following members to come to the stage. Andrew Chen, VP Rove and Data at Apolia Group. Jerry Ying, VP at TransUnion. Brian Chen, Advisory CTO at Radical System Limited. Dr. Todd Trump, Founding Chairman at Data Literacy Association. Dr. Todd Trump, the stage is yours as you moderate the panel discussion. Thank you. Thank you. So, still good morning, right? It's a sunny sky before the typhoon. So, so we are lucky. So, it's still sunny day. So, it's good to learn more about API today. Definitely thanks for Patrick and his team to really give a very good platform for us to discuss about this. So, this is uh, a very good panel because we have quite a few of uh, experts in API, not just the technical side, but also the use cases. So uh, how we actually using API to co-create values, solve problems for our customers, our ecosystem, that's the main theme of it. So, so uh, I'm Dr. Tor Chan, I'm the uh, founding chairman of Data Literacy Association. So similar like API community, we have a data community, try to gather all experts in data, particularly users, like HR, marketing and sales people, operation, how they can make use of data to really help them to do their data job, daily jobs, put it this way, and together with our experts. So that, that's the background, so we have a booth out there, so if you want to know more about Data Literacy Association, please feel free uh, to check it out there. So uh, I talk too much, I'll let uh, our expert to talk about that. Let's go and run to introduce you. Brian, how about introduce yourself first? Okay, I am the <coughs> uh, advisory CTO for Radical Systems which is a marketing automation uh, company. So basically, we deal every day with data. Okay, good. Can you replace that chair for me? I think probably uh, my rate is too high, so I need to run more. So it's a cluck, 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 right? It's not good. Yeah, thank you. Go ahead. Yeah, please, thank you. All right. Um, sure. I'm Jerry Ying. Um, um, I'm the Chief Product Officer for Chinese Union APAC. Uh, we deal with credit bureau data. Um, within our business, we do have the credit services that running risks for banks and we do fraud solution and also we also offer uh, consumer solution. So we actually deal with API on different aspects of the business uh, to really serve the market. Thank you, Jerry. Jerry is so humble. I learned a lot from him. So he's probably the first or second generation when using API law. Yeah, in the credit bureau and all these credit related things, this is very important. Uh, thank you. And Andrew, can you introduce yourself? So this is Andrew. Uh, I'm the VP of Growth and Data in Apoidia Group. So uh, this is a company uh, having various products. And uh, now we're focusing on creating a media app that is like uh, having tech innovation. Uh, before, I was working in Foodpanda as well. So uh, a bit later, maybe I can share a little bit use case uh, from Foodpanda as well. Thank you. Thank you so much for all your uh, three gentlemen. So my first question for you guys is, you are all expert in data and API. So, so as I said, promise you guys want to see more use case. So how are you going to make use of API? I'm sure that actually Brian has been in uh, a few corporate that uh, one of them we work together, right? Yeah. So you have uh, also worked with the startup as well. So can you share us uh, some of the use case that use API to create values? Yes, so um, <clears throat> in my previous company, which is a trading and, and retail company, uh, where we have um, both online, offline, and also a lot of uh, our uh, restaurant outlets because we are selling beer and with uh, wines to them. So we're doing a lot of data uh, in, in our and coming. So four years ago, so we start to uh, implement a new uh, connection to them. Before, before we implement that so-called API model, we are in a spaghetti world. Every system are connecting each other point to point, uh, not even using API call or whatever way they, 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 they can get the data across. So four years ago, we implemented a, a new uh, platform. I call it API Lego. So it's not a point to point API. There's no point uh, using point to point API because we are dealing with uh, multiple source and <clears throat> we have only a single ERP at the end. So all the uh, external connection to any outside world, whether it's Shopify, whether it's Salesforce, whether it's uh, uh, Hong Kong or we get all those rooms. So we have API connection to them, but the API will land in our, our Lego platform. On the end, we have 
in connection back to our logistics, our Oracle ERP, our uh, finance systems. So, it, which is only single entry. So any order from Shopify from POS will merge, translate into a single order entry to Oracle. In that way, you can imagine if I tomorrow I plug in TV more, uh, uh, T I plug in a new uh, e-commerce, I only change the front part, the front leg. The backend leg doesn't need any changes. They will automatically be connected. So that's the way we start the API journey. Wow, that's, the ROI is very easy to calculate. Yeah. Like how much time you save, how well, much cost you save. In the past, if we put in one journey, it may take easily six months to connect one additional sales channel. Yeah. But now we only take uh, shorter than two months because we only test the front part. The end part doesn't need any testing. Where it's not just save their own time. It also takes all the uh, maintenance effort and testing effort. Yeah, so very significant thing there. So you got a lot of promotion after that, I guess. <laughs> yeah, good, 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 right. So, uh, Jerry, can you share some use case? Yeah, I, I yeah. think from TransUnion, we do have consumer bureau data that actually cover all the credit information. And obviously with the identity and address, one of the things that we actually keep thinking of how do we embed some of these data services as part of the uh, uh, ecosystem within bank, whether it's from a digital onboarding or SME uh, onboarding space, I think this is where we actually start employing a lot of API link through the digital onboarding journey. So I think a few years back, we start introducing EKYC process that how do you act? Obviously, the document authentication, facial recognition, these are kind of technology that capture. But the ultimately, what we want is how should we reduce the friction mm. of the onboarding mm. by using data? Sure. I think that is one of the key thing on on using things like identity verification against bureau. How do you check on the address if the, the person who actually apply for a loan who actually have frequently changed address might also imply mm. that be potential fraud, right? Yep. And also, uh, we actually work with our global technology using like device technology that covering six billion devices globally. So to really detect uh, uh, any uh, mobile devices that actually onboarding would have potential risk. So a lot of different layer, including email, risk, and then some other that we actually create a set of API that allow customers to mix and match the layer, and they can decide how, what are the kind of additional step of authentication they need to enable the most seamless onboarding process. Yeah. And the other pieces is that when you actually look at onboarding journey, ultimately what you want to do is to make the right decision, whether it's from a credit underwriting, how do you make use of credit data to maybe approve a loan instant? I think this is what we want to embed the whole API services mm -hmm. so that the, the client can use it faster. And then the, uh, and the whole ecosystem will be a lot more efficient. Yeah, I, I heard external and internal benefit. External benefit definitely is seamless customer experience, yeah. right? So people feel much comfortable to onboarding uh, your services. On the other internal, you make use of it to determine the risk right, from different angles or even fraud on that. So it's a very powerful uh, way to use it. So definitely we learn more about it. It's not easy, I guess. Right, it's because sometimes it will make it work. Right? Yeah, especially we, it is 40 years business that but we actually move from no API yeah. batch processing into something with API yeah. and automatic. Yeah. Uh, that evolution actually takes a, a lot of effort. And also we, we also need to make sure that the, the client, mm -hmm. that as they change from one system sure. to another, how the migration work, that that's actually takes a lot of effort. Yeah, we'll talk more about the challenges later. I'm yeah. sure that it's not free lunch. There's definitely a lot of things they pay the, the fee already, now they are enjoying the benefit. So we learn more later on. Uh, Andrew, you can talk about, you know, preparing them also your own uh, current job. What's the use case that you face? Um, I think I can share a little bit more from Food Panda that I know a little bit more. Um, um, uh, I think internally we are using it, obviously, in our app, like uh, within uh, the app, when you are trying to say search uh, for certain keywords and the whole thread uh, will come out, uh, all of those like data exchange are obviously are uh, under API. We are a little bit more lucky. Uh, the company is not like uh, having uh, that that much of a legacy. So yeah, no legacy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> start from scratch. Uh, we already got like API uh, uh, technology uh, being involved. So uh, that uh, just like what uh, Don Sham said, it's like seamless uh, customer experience that we can have, we can offer. 
Um, externally, we also try uh, to drill a bit on uh, the business side. Like uh, uh, we, we also like you know uh, have some connections with uh, Jerry uh, Chan's Union before. Uh, we have been uh, trying uh, and see whether or not we can have uh, some kind of um, information we have for the restaurants that we can help them to uh, uh, approach like banks or uh, loans uh, from their side uh, more easily. So uh, from us, we can you know help uh, provide that kind of information and then uh, package uh, in uh, in data package that we can you know. Pass through it through API. So, yeah, uh, yeah. very impressive. Actually, I, I I involved in these two companies, in fact, three companies now. So I know what you guys are doing on that. One is a very you know a lot of products actually distributed by uh, your former company, yeah. Capstone, right? So it's, it's a, how, how many years? I think one hundred fifty years, something like that. Right? More than that, I think one hundred fifty something. Yes, yeah, yeah. a long history. Wow. So two, a lot yeah. of legacy, right? So so what's yeah. the challenges when you put together all these? API use case together? Well, um, the challenge is, uh, you remember I call it API Nagel. I, I don't call it, I don't explain too much details because the board doesn't understand what's API. <laughs> but they understand the difficulty or the, the problem of the previous situations because if they want to add something, it takes six months and a lot of testing and a lot of errors. So uh, I, I sold this concept to the board. It's, uh, it's an API Lego. I redraw some Lego blocks putting together, show how the API works. And within 10 minutes, they understand it. And from then onwards, they will talk to me, uh, where is my Lego? Uh, uh, is my Lego working? <laughs> so, so that's one way to uh, use a different concept or different visual impact to, to, to sell the concept report. So once they buy in, then it, the rest is easy. So uh, they don't care how much money I spend, I, they just care about the return because we can do things a lot faster than before. Yeah, so, so it's, it's very good you use Lego to do that, right? So it's a common language. Yeah. Not too many people understand API. Yeah. Exactly. So how, how you tell the story is very important. Yeah. So to bring it through. How about the financial justification? You still need to invest to do that, right? So how do you justify that? Well, um, the, the justification is the first the, the time, the lead time to in, in, in incorporate one additional gen, uh, channel. The other is they do see the current situation is really um, not maintainable. So they, they know, I mean, from the, the, the two diagrams, you show a uh, spaghetti of connection on the left yeah. and what a Lego becomes. So they easily uh, understand the, the uh, intangible benefit, so to speak. Well, the tangible benefit only comes when we have new channels, honestly. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, and also uh, we have partnership with Patrick. Yeah. Uh, that uh, the cost is not that high. <laughs> That, that's good, that's good. So uh, Lego, I remember that. So you guys can make use of the Lego to tell the story, to convince your boss or client to commit on that. So uh, Jerry, also a long history, like how, how old is TransUnion? Maybe? Well, TransUnion, I think it's, it's uh, Hong Kong is 40 years, I obviously globally yeah. it's also around 40, 40. So it's a long history as well. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So, so how, what, what kind of challenges when you want to put together? Well, I think um, obviously, the data privacy is one of the big, right. big thing that we look at from a use of data, whether you actually are allowed to use for certain purposes. Let me give a, uh, a good example. Mm -hmm. um, recently, we actually started working on a financial inclusion for Philippine banks. So maybe let, let me take a Philippine example. Philippine, they got uh, 100, uh, 100 million population, but the bureau data is only have around 20 so in order to really have a good coverage of scoring the consumer, you actually need to work with telco player. And then obviously, by accessing telco and using their score, uh, we want to create a universal score so that it's an API that actually connect with multiple player, mm -hmm. and then we take back the score, and then we obviously we validate, and then we realign the score with the bureau score, so that when the customer uses it, they actually see the entire market. And then you actually able to boost from 25 million to 70, 80 mi uh, uh, million population. So that, that actually helps a lot yeah. from financial inclusion point of view. Technically, it's worth mixing. But with the other pieces is that it's the 
is the telco got the content from yeah. the consumer. Yeah. Are you okay to actually do this back testing or validation yeah. from that? I think we ran through a lot of hurdles to go through these kind of compliance review, understanding, uh, seeking regulator approval, and then that that actually takes a lot of effort. Yeah. And 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 one of the key thing I I do see is that. Uh, Ideation is as important, yeah. and secondly, is it how do we actually work work through these different hurdles? Yeah, that was, I, I also learned that you, uh, you know, in the afternoon, I think, uh, you know, the uh, federal learning provider will be here as well. Yes. So I, I, I know that you're one of the early adopters of the, uh, you know, federal learning. Would that help on that problem? Yes, technology actually do help, because I think one of the key way to use federal learning is that, um, I wouldn't say it, it actually solved all the problem, but think about it. In order for you to create a score um, that actually encapsulate the, the data, because normally you don't, don't, do not want to directly use the raw data for decisioning because that, that might violate data privacy. By using federal learning, you can actually connect third party data and create something integrated at a score, and that could be, at least from an analytic point of view, it, you make it work first. Once you get better work, you can always seek a consent from a consumer. Can I use that data for scoring you for providing that value-added services? I think that is a lot easier because once the, the most difficult part is how do you make it work for us okay. that, to prove it, and that that proving require that technology. I think that, that, that's, that's how we see, see the benefit of better learning. That's good. It's encouraging. So uh, we'll try it out later on. Andrew, uh, what's your challenge? I think like totally agree with what Jerry said. The privacy and uh, compliance are a major factor that we have uh, to you know kind of being stuck uh, in, in within stages <laughs> that uh, we always encounter. I do think that yes, uh, federated learning would be something that uh, could exist for for this. And also, uh, uh, we are also exploring something like synthetic data that uh, maybe we are not really transporting the real sense of data, but it's more like a uh, a subset model that could generate very similar results out. So um, a lot of like work around problem we need to uh, think about uh, when we are trying to collaborate with other companies, especially with like banks and things, credit and you know privacy issues. Yeah, you mentioned a good point. I think both TransUnion and uh, Foodpanda is a global company, right? Uh, so you have a lot of legacy from the headquarters. So something you cannot change, I'm gonna have to be uh, the same or whatever. So that's another challenge as well. But because of time, I want to switch gear to another uh, very important questions. So besides integrating, you know, uh, seamless customer experience, and API and data also is a new avenue, revenue sources with this way. Uh, if you can create very sexy, marketable data products. So I would like to uh, get some uh, tap into their, their brains what kind of data product you have created or plan to create? So you can help your company to create uh, more revenue and also provide better value for your customer. Brian, can you uh, share? Yeah, um, so for Radical, we are, we are doing <coughs> market automation. So we are processing a lot of um, promotion message through different channels, email, SMS, and collecting feedback for those uh, promotion messages. So basically, we still kept a lot of uh, customer response to different uh, promotional materials. So there's huge value on that. Uh, the work in the past, uh, we generate our own dashboard uh, report for the customer to understand the conversion rate, the response rates. But actually, there are a lot hidden uh, uh, value on those data. So we are uh, planning to create an API for our own customers, our cu uh, customers, to collect, uh, to dive into a system to take out data that is relevant to them, because they own the e-commerce side, they own the sales side, we own the uh, marketing side. Merging this together would give, give them a much more powerful uh, uh, value to on the customer journey side. So this may not give us additional re revenue, but it will increase the stickiness of sure. our customer to our product. Stickiness is so important, right? So it also can convert into revenue uh, in the long term sustainably. So uh, Jerry, I know you create quite a lot of new data products as well. So can you share a little bit more? Yeah, I yeah. think one of the key things that recently we start to evolve 
of, I think we've been here 40 years, I think a lot of them are using credit risk and fraud space. Um, and, and, and lately we actually start to look at how should we apply credit data for, for example, um, insurance usage on, on insurance payment underwriting or, or, fraud, uh, or, or uh, risk-based pricing for other critical and usage. Um, uh, some of that actually involving crossing the industry that outside of what we call the bureau control. How do you actually break through that? Right? Mm -hmm. And how do you actually make this available for not only within the financial service, what we call the banking industry, but also outside that? Sure. And I think that that's where the further learning that we talk about sure. and how do we make use of. Because sometimes the, the prediction of fraud, uh, credit data actually, actually is highly predictive by combining external data. And that external data, uh, not until you test it and you, you use the modeling to validate it, uh, then you can prove, oh, maybe this person with a highly um, uh, uh, frequently changing address, changing phone number, that, you, uh, that that person might be have a lapsation of uh, not contributing their, their insurance policy that quickly. Or those, those people who may be doing uh, uh, insurance claim may have a high propensity of fraud sure. of that. So I think these are some of the validation that we're starting to went through and work with some of the insurance vertical customers to, to identify, oh, this may be a good use case. And in, 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 the, in the West, we, we do see some of these actual use cases and we do have business line that yeah. using credit data to serve. And what we need to do is to keep trying and also try to convince regulator this is a big way to do it and how do we actually apply it I think that, that's a lot of effort and hurdle. Yeah, I think TransUnion's case is very interesting, right? So on one hand, data, data analytics, data products, is helping your own business. Yeah. On the other hand, you are trying to really make use of the data asset that you accumulate yeah. and also capture new data coming into your data asset so you can monetize it in a different way, yeah. right? So, so it's, it's the power of data is not just limited to within your four walls. Uh, there's a lot more uh, innovation that you can create new data products. So I'm sure that Andrew is uh, trying to do the same thing in Little Panda and also in a new adventure. Yeah, uh, yeah I mean, uh, I, I want to share one very interesting uh, use case we've got uh, with the data product or uh, like API product. So um, uh, probably all, all of us know ChatGPT, right? I don't need to explain about that. So uh, over there, they actually uh, um, open with an open, API, open AI API that we can adopt. So within a month, we already like create a, a product with that API. Um, I think uh, if you used uh, ChatGPT, there are like two drawbacks. One is like uh, the privacy issue. Everything that you put in, it will be used uh, for training. Secondly, it's about like a VPN that is like kind of locked in this region. So with this product, we try to solve these two problems. Uh, with the API, you can just use freely with uh, ChatGPT. And then secondly, because it's, uh, it, uh, it's the API, we don't need to uh, worry about like the privacy issue. Uh, one more thing that we uh, add in would be like, uh, we try to make it like a prompt version of GitHub, if you can visualize this. Mm -hmm. We try to save like different prompts from different users, and then we use it as a community. Everyone can use the platform and try to use a similar prompt that they can, uh, you know, uh, make it faster to get uh, the output up. So, uh, yeah, this is like pretty interesting, and I would say it's more like uh, how quickly you can adopt. I would say when technology come, if you can uh, react quickly, then you can be the first mover, and then you can leverage, uh, you know, different knowledge uh, through API from different companies. It could be knowledge, it could be data or information. Uh, so uh, that's like that's why I do think that this is a very interesting product. Yeah, you guys have a lot of experience. I'm sure that uh, we have not enough time to go through every one of them in detail. But can you just think about what sort of recommendation you can give to our audience? So when they want to, I would use the term monetize API and data, right? At the end of the day, you want to monetize it, but not only just making revenue for your company, but making your customer happy is also a way to monetize. Because if they're happy, they were willing to pay you and pay you more and pay you sustainably. So it's very important to look at that, right? So, so Brian, any recommendation for our audience? Well, um, my, my guideline to the team to, to develop the API Lego is uh, first is 
they need to think about reusability. So every API code we made, it should be reusable in some way. We don't need to repeat the coding. Second is we need to think about the whole cycle of the integrations. This is not just one, one, one way or one, one time. Uh, because uh, every time we deal with a uh, single version of truth of data, <clears throat> so when you get the data, it, the first time is easy. You just get the, the new order in. But how about changes to that order afterwards, to that source of truth afterwards? So we need to, to have the API uh, designed in a way that it can handle subsequent changes to the single source of truth and fit back to the, the single repository. Mm -hmm. So reusable and also single version of the truth, right? So good. Kerry? Yeah, I think from a um, bureau platform company point of view, you think that the whole incubation ability how should we make the API accessible freely to test so that you can use it for ideation creation so that you have new concept or solution obviously the commercial the, the security the consent come next right? obviously in order for you to access them there must be some kind of revenue sharing there is must be some kind of uh, uh, privacy compliance they need to but we should be bold to test it out first. Mm -hmm. We can use syndicated data, we can use better learning to really test out the concept. The next step is to commercialize. I think how the commercialization, how to legalize the, the solution is, mm -hmm. is something that we need all bear in mind. But the process needs to make sure that we not pushing back on any innovation and supporting the innovation. I think that is the most important. Very sense. Andrew? Um, for me, I think open-minded and creative, I, I think it's very important because like nowadays uh, over like outside there are a lot of different data, a lot of API available that you can use. So it's more like within your business use case, how do you think that, um, you know, alternative data could help you and then you can start explore outside uh, that. You, know, you can't imagine how many actually data or information outside already that could, you know, be used uh, by your use case. So be open-minded. Be open-minded. Very good. I think uh, we are right on time. So I know that uh, you don't want to be late for lunch, right? I think it's uh, some section after us. So thanks again. Let's give a big hand to all our panel speakers. Thank you so much. So maybe we can go to the discussion. So we have already heard about the insights on importance of protecting APIs and data, as well as the different use cases of data. So how can we leverage open API to do something further on top? Our next speaker will discuss the exciting topic of unlocking the power of data through open API. Jigar Basali, VP Solution Architecture. APJ at Solution uh, at Software AG, who share his expertise and experiences with us. Digger is a seasoned technology professional, and he has involved the, the API Connect Hong Kong 2023 conference is powered by Be Novelty Limited. Check out more API-related education content on benovelty.com or apidays.hk for more information.